Hey guys, welcome back to Weld.com. So today we're going to do some more flux core arc welding, self-shielded variety, pre-qualified procedure, complete joint penetration through AWS D1.1 in the 3G position. So once you guys follow me back over to, the, to my office here, we're going to go ahead and draw the welding symbol again. It seems like a lot of you guys appreciated the welding symbol, so we're going to throw that in there as well and show you how to prep the plates. All right, so let's talk about our fit up here. So we have two plates. We're going to do a single V butt joint with backing. So this right here is what we call our reference line. This is where all of our information is based off of. Every, all the information you're going to pull to create this plate or the weldment, uh, whatever fixture you're going to be working on, all that information is going to be pulled from the reference line. So on the reference line, we have two sides. We have arrow side, which is down here, and other side, which is up here. So my backing strip is actually going to be sit, situated right here because the backing strip is going to be on the other side of where this is pointed. Okay, and now my, my joint preparation, the single V groove, is going to be on arrow side. Arrow side is right here where it's pointing. Okay, so wherever that arrow is pointing, that is where this preparation is going to occur. Other side is where the backing strip is. It's on the opposite side of where that arrow is pointing. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing, quarter inch root opening with a 45 degree included angle. Okay, so that's this whole situation right here is going to be 45 degrees. Okay, which means each plate has to be beveled half of this angle. So for this instance, it's going to be 22 and a half degrees. So each bevel is going to be 22 and a half degrees, and that's based off of 90. So if you had a 30 degree bevel right here, each plate would be beveled at 15 degrees. Okay, so this whole angle is 45 degree included angle. We're going to be using flux core arc welding information such as that. You would often find in the tail. The tail is um, kind of running out of room here, so we'll just put it right here. That says FCAW S. Okay, my handwriting is just as bad as my drawing, so I apologize for that. But this is the note section of the, uh, the welding symbol. Now, typically, you may not have a tail. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. If you do, there typically is information in there that's um, additional information that they don't have a welding symbol for. Uh, it's not listed in your general notes. It's not listed in your supplementary notes. It's listed over here in the tail, such as... Um, uh, weld sequence, uh, hold points, uh, weld processes, anything that they can't convey to you with a symbol that's already pre-established, they'll typically put in the tail over there. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we're going to bevel it. we got these plates already beveled out. I'll show you how that looks. And then the, um, we'll go ahead and set the fixture up. We'll get it all tacked together and chalked up, and then we'll kind of go over the settings of the machine. Okay, so because we're coming off of a 90-degree angle, we have to subtract the 22.5 degrees from 90. Okay, so that's going to give us 67 and a half degrees. That's where we want to bevel our plates. That's the angle of the bevel you're going to put on each plate is 22 and a half, but we're going to measure it 67 and a half on the, um, on the protractor here. Now, just to show you, if I went from zero and did a 22 and a half degree bevel, that's not going to give me a 45 degree included angle when I put these two plates together. We're going to go ahead and set this to 67 and a half degrees. It'd be the same thing if you're, uh, you're cutting it on a torch or cutting it on a plasma. You're going to set a protractor up there or an angle finder, get it to 67 and a half degrees. Okay, so this plate right here is right on it. So that's a 22 and a half degree bevel right there. This plate over here is off just a little bit, but we're allowed negative five to plus 10 on our, on our bevel angle. So that's our 22 and a half degrees. It looks like we might be a, a degree, degree and a half out. It's not a big deal, still within tolerance. So when we put these together, we're going to be roughly, I don't know, 45 to 47 degree included angle, which is well within the specifications that we're allowed. So we're going to go ahead and get these cleaned up, and all I'm going to do is just take off the mill scale. I don't want any of that on the surface when I'm welding. I don't want to pull in any impurities or contaminants. It's best just to get rid of that stuff. We're going to use a hard rock, buff it out with a, um, a flapper disc, and then we'll be, we'll be all set up to, uh, to tack these together. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust this backing strip in here to where it's roughly about centered. Clamp one side down. And then I'm just going to use a regular piece of quarter inch, quarter inch thick steel. You can use aluminum, doesn't matter. Anything that's a quarter inch. I'm just going to set both ends to where they're a quarter inch. Okay. I have pretty much equal spacing on the backing strip. 
Now my, my root, uh, root opening is quarter inch and I'm gonna go ahead and tack these in place. So now I'm just gonna rotate this around. That way I can get to it for welding. And then I'll double check this opening while I'm here. So I'll just adjust them where I need them. I've got my quarter inch spacing back. Now remember, I, I do have tolerances in here as well. So it doesn't have to be exactly a quarter inch. But I like to, I like to maintain a nice quarter inch to 5 16 So that's good there. And I'll tack this up. I'm going to flip this over. And just to kind of help, you know, so this plate doesn't turn into too much of a banana, I'm going to weld these back sides here. That keeps everything. You want nice, tight steel, right? You want both. You want the, uh, the backing strip nice and tight up against the place that you're going to be welding on. So to ensure that, that we don't get any warps, look down the, uh, the coupe on there, make sure there's no gaps on the backing, and we'll go ahead and tack these up. I'm just going to do about three, three quarter inch to one inch tacks on the back, each side. Now I'll just clean this whole thing up with a wire wheel and we'll be good to set it up in the fixture. All right, so we got the test, test plate up in the fixtures to hold it in the, uh, the 3G position or vertical. We're running uh, the ESOB 285 IC, running some Select Arc 701 045 diameter wire. It's a E71T-11. Uh, running about 160 inches a minute and 19 volts, 19 and a half volts. And that should give us about 200 amps while we're welding. So it's more than adequate for 3 8 material with a quarter inch backer. All right, so over the weekend, I got a question in the comments section on our last video with, uh, where we did the same wire, the Select Arc 701 in the horizontal position, they said that they were getting porosity at the start of their weld. One thing you can do to help mitigate that is to clip your wire. So if you clip your wire, you get better arc initiation characteristics. That way when you start, you don't get a bunch of popping and kicking back because if you're getting all that, the shielding gas that is created by the, the, the flux inside the wire, right? You're not getting adequate coverage in that area because it's kicking back. Another thing is you're not maintaining the appropriate contact tip to work distance. So snip your wire, start off. It's recommended for this wire, 5 eighths contact tip to work distance. Uh, we're gonna point in here. I'm gonna point slightly down, maybe five to 10 degrees and pull this electrode up, okay? So if there's slaggy drag, so I'm dragging this up. Um, you can also point straight in. These are just the two techniques that are typically recommended for this wire specifically. You'll notice that I do have a nozzle on here. The nozzle, you do not need a nozzle for self-shielding gas or self-shielded wire. However, because the way that this gun is built, the, this nozzle is actually retaining my contact tip. So if I took the nozzle off, the contact tip would fall off as soon as I pulled the trigger and the wire started feeding. So that's why I have that nozzle on there. You don't need that for self-shielded. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it. Screwed up. Didn't, uh, I didn't check my drive roll tensioners before I got into this, and as a result, I got poor feeding issues in here. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to cut this out. If this were a real world application, I kinda wanna show you guys how to fix this repair. Depending on what code you're testing to, you may be able to use a grinder on the test, you may not. I know with D15, you cannot use mechanical tools. D11, there's no specific requirements to say you can't. So I wanna show you guys how to fix this, and then we'll get back into it now that I've got the drive rolls tensioned properly. Um, we'll go ahead, clean this up, and then we'll start that root pass all over again. So what I'm going to do to fix this is I'm going to, I'm going to run this wheel on the end to clean that groove back out. One thing to note that if you, if you ever have to do this, make sure that the grinding wheel that you're going to use or cutoff wheel that you're going to use, most cutoff wheels will be fine, but the grinding wheel this is a little bit thicker than most of your cutoff wheels. So this can be used at 90 degrees, meaning I can use this exterior face of this wheel, or I can use it at 45 so I can clean my plates up like this, but I can also turn it up on end and use it like this. So it's made to do that. A lot of grinding discs are not made to do that. When you turn them on end and you start grinding, it tears that edge away, it starts to erode, it chips it, and then that, that wheel starts rocking until it eventually it breaks or explodes. You don't want to do that. So make sure that the wheel that you're going to use for this um, is designed for the intended purpose. Okay? They make the wheels for that specific reason. Go ahead, throw a couple in your gang box. You know, you're definitely not going to regret it. It's a very common application for it. Uh, we're just going to turn it up on end clean that out and then uh, we should be good to go all right we're back apologize for that uh, so as you can see mistakes happen incidents happen um, got complacent got in a hurry uh, didn't set the drive tension rolls uh, so 
that was the result. So I had to clean that up. So now we'll go ahead and get back into it. All right, so we got the root tied in. Got a good, good tie in on both sides. Made connection with the backing strip. All three plates are tied in together. So now everything's kind of nice and uniform. I'm gonna go ahead, uh, my personal preference, I'm gonna run one stringer up the right hand side of this and go just just over halfway of the, uh, the root pass to the left side. So that'll give me a good foundation uh, to put my third pass in, which I'm just gonna stick that on the right hand side. Um, laying the groundwork for that cap, right? I'm just gonna throw two inner passes in there for right now. You could probably get away with, you know, throwing a little bit wider of a stringer in there, technically a weave. Uh, you'd still be fine. Um, this is not, I, I just prefer doing stringers, right? That's just my personal preference, but you could throw a weave in there and it'd be safe. It'd still be within the, uh, the allowable limits. So we'll go ahead and uh, throw that next stringer in there. So that's pass number two. Got a good even tie into the right side of the plate. And then I'm covering up just over 50% of my root pass. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put in pass number three. That's gonna be on the left side. I'm gonna tie the left side plate into pass number two. So I'm gonna cover up that first weld, that root pass, 100%, tie into the uh, weld number two and that base plate. That's my whole objective. And then I wanna stay below the corner of this beveled plate. Right, that way I can start building up to where I put my cap on there. You know, I like to stay that uh, about a sixteenth inch low before I go to cap. Once again, this wire lays pretty flat in there. So once I put uh, pass number three in there, I may have to put two more in there to bring me up to where I'm ready to cap. All right, pass number three is in. So I'm going to go ahead and put two more inner passes in here, one on the right hand side, one on the left hand side, and then I should be right where I want to be before I go to cap. Remember, I'm laying the groundwork, all the foundation for that final cap. That cap cannot exceed 1 8 of an inch and it can't be any less than flush. So I wanna make sure it's at least flush to an eighth inch over. Uh, if I can hit around a 16th of an inch cap, I'll be happy. Uh, if not, as long as I'm within those parameters, I'm good with it. All right, so just like in pass number two, I'm going to rotate my gun. I, I never explained the, uh, the work angles, I apologize for that. So on pass number three, if I was 90 degrees perpendicular to the plate, I'm gonna to rotate to my left. I'm gonna bring that in about 15 degrees. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of point into that corner, favor that right hand side of that, that edge. Same thing um, that I did on pass number two. I'm gonna do the same thing on pass number three. So this is gonna to apply to both of those passes. When I go to the next one, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna rotate 15 degrees to the right to tuck into that left hand corner. That's just gonna allow your, your weld to flow in a lot better and get it in position where you want it to be. And then just watch the right and left hand sides of your puddles because those, once they solidify, those are gonna be the edges of your weld. All right, so that was pass number four. Got it uh, tied in where I wanted it. I brought it up just to the edge of that plate so I still have some of that exposed edge left. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put in pass number five to the left hand side and uh, bring it all the way up flush to that edge and then I'll go ahead, I'm ready for my caps at that point. I'll probably do a three bead cap and then that should pretty much uh, 
Finish this. All right, so we can get ahead. Uh, we went ahead and put pass number five in. Now we are ready to cap. So I'm just below flush on this left-hand side. I'm gonna use the corner of that plate as that's kind of like my uh, my marker. I'm gonna shoot right for the center of that with the uh, with my puddle. So I want 50% on the left-hand side, 50% on the right-hand side of the edge of that plate, that very corner, because I wanna tie in over here about eighth inch roughly, maybe 3 16ths to that left-hand side on that plate. And then every pass after that, I'm gonna use that 10 to 15 degree uh, work angle and kind of stack each pass up against the previous, right? That'll give it a little bit of meat to tie into. That way I can stay flat on the plate. If I go straight in, I'm gonna end up with a bunch of humps like a camel on there. I don't want that. The first one I've got a little bit of meat to tie into because I'm just under flush. So that's gonna give me something to push that weld into. Second weld is gonna tie into the first one. Third weld is gonna tie into the second one. And then that should uh, lead us over the edge of the, uh, the right hand side of the plate and then we'll be done. All right, so just looking at the general overall appearance, uh, everything looks pretty good. Smooth tie-ins, everything's lapped in good with each other. There's no porosity. I don't have any undercut to worry about. I went through it with the weld reinforcement gauge. Everything is under an eighth of an inch. Uh, it's actually right about, uh, I'm guessing to be a sixteenth. I don't have a sixteenth inch increment on here. It goes from zero to eighth inch, three sixteenths and a quarter. So I'm, I'm above zero and below eight, which or below an eighth, which is exactly where I wanted to be. Overall turned out pretty good. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know I did making it. Till next time, make every well better than your last.